I think all of that. And thank you so much for saying that I'm funny. You make my day when you say that. That's what I'm trying to be. That's what I like to make my fiction, even if it's serious. And as you say, I do cover topics which are deeper or more troubling. But I think that a really great way to get a message across and to make people think and to make feel, people feel better about life I think I was incredibly lucky. <laughs> um, I sometimes think, I got married when? What? 21? Are you insane? Um, somehow it's all worked out. I mean, I think something I really believe in, and actually it's something that I've explored in my books, is you have to talk through problems. Don't go to bed and think, I'm really cross about this, or I'm really confused by this behavior, or you know, this has gone wrong, and say nothing and go to bed and be miserable. Talk about it, even if it takes you all night. Don't let these tiny problems become big ones. Just try and iron them out as you go. Um, that's my only top tip, and have a sense of humour. You could probably guess that one already. I think it applies to everything from books to marriages to, you know, all, all that comes to you in life, really. I'm, I'm sort of organised to a point. Some bits of my life are really organised, like the plots of my books. I plan and I put file cards on the wall and I think about them all the time and I'm quite obsessive. And then other bits of my life are utter chaos. Um, but luckily, as you touched on before, I've been married a long time. My husband, if he's not used to it by now, he never will be. And, and thankfully, he's kind of got to grips with the fact that when I'm in a book, I just sort of slightly disappear into that book. And he is brilliant. He will sort of step in and, and organise the stuff that needs to be done. Well, um, I've written a book all about surprises that backfire and go wrong with sort of disastrous and comical effect. And that is definitely inspired from sort of some incidents in real life. And I've come to the conclusion that I like a semi-surprise. I like it when someone says... I'm going to take you out next week, you know, I'm not exactly going to tell you where, but we're, you know, we're going to do something nice, because then you have a chance to get ready, you know, not be wearing your ratty clothes, and, and sort of have half an idea that something's going on. But a friend of mine got completely surprised once with a baby shower, and she said she was in her worst clothes, and she couldn't believe that someone had landed this on her. She didn't even have time to put in her contact lenses. That's the kind of surprise I'm really not, not very into. I kind of think that when you've got a lot of children, there's always a to-do list somewhere. <laughs> so this kind of whole concept of, oh, I think I'll just switch off now and not doing it for, for a while, that, that kind of doesn't happen so much. I do find the bath is quite a useful place. No one is going to bother you in the bath, you know, um, not even your children. They're a bit like, oh, you know, I'm not going in there. Um, so that's my place I escape. I'm having a bath now, everybody. Um, but having said that, usually when I'm in the bath, I start thinking, ooh, what about a book about this? Or, ooh, what about a character who does that? And then I'm scrabbling around with wet hands trying to find something to write my idea down. So I don't really ever switch off would be the honest answer. No, there, that would be a good idea. This shows how organised I am. There is not. So either I'm like scrabbling with, you know, in a towel to find a pen, or I'm using lip liner to kind of <laughs> scribble it. Yeah. I should have a better system. You're right. <laughs> Fixie tries to fix everything. Little things and big things. She's the type that if she sees something crooked, she has to straighten it. And if she sees a mess, she's the one who clears it up. Even if someone else starts clearing it up, she looks at them and she thinks, oh, you're not doing a good enough job. Let, let me, let me do that for you. Um, she, she does it too far, really. She helps everybody too much. And part of what the book is about is, you know, sometimes you have to stop trying to fix everything for everybody else and help everybody else and you sometimes have to sort of look at yourself and, and help yourself and kind of fix your own life before you're always trying to fix everybody else's.